Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this series we are going to look into Java IO APIs. That is, how does Java read and data from any input, for example a file, or how does Java write it to a file. So to understand input and output, you need to have a very high level understanding of encoding and decoding. So which is what we will discuss in this video. And while we discuss encoding and decoding, we will also touch base on what character sets are and what does really UTF-8, 16 or 32 means. So uh, Java or any computer program can have various types of input or output devices. So they could be hard disks, they could be databases, they could be networks. The main thing to know is, and I'm sure it wouldn't come with a surprise, that all the data that is written onto these devices are done in a binary format. So that is into zeros and ones. So what that essentially means is any data that we write onto these sources or read from these sources has to be the binary representation. There is a way how we can convert the integers into binary format. And the way we do it is we actually recursively divide the number and it's quotient to two until the quotient reaches to less than two. And then we pick the remainders in the reverse order and that whatever output we get is the binary equivalent of the number. So in this example, the binary equivalent of five is one, zero, one. Similarly, let's have another example. Let's say 25. So the binary equivalent of 25 will be 11001. So the main takeaway is that any decimal number can be converted into a binary format as I have shown in this slide. Now, let's say I have a file and I want to store my name with the exclamation mark onto the hard drive. We have seen how the integers are converted into the binary representation, but how would characters be converted into binary representation? And the way that is done is using a standard. And what you're looking at here is an SKI table. So this table has a mapping of a character to a decimal number. So for example, capital H is equivalent to a 72 decimal number. So when H needs to be stored into the hard drive, we would convert H into 72, which is a decimal, and that 72 would be converted into binary format because we know how to convert decimal to binary, and that binary will be stored on the hard drive. So what you see in this table is it has all the capital letters from A to Z. It has all the small letters A to Z. It has from zero to nine, which are the numbers, and it has few special characters as well. So if you have to write a basic English language transcript, you can use this table to convert the characters into decimal representation, and then that decimal is converted to binary, which is stored on the hard drive. So on this table, you'd see a total of 128 characters, starting from zero to 127. And now let's do the conversion of this string into first decimal numbers. And using the table, this is the equivalent decimal representation of each of the characters. Even the exclamation mark has a decimal representation, which is 33. And once we know the decimal, they can be converted into binary and this binary will be stored onto the hard disk. And this whole process is known as encoding. So we are encoding a string into binary form. And the reverse of this, while the program reads from the hard disk, it reads a binary format, but then it has to convert into appropriate characters. So that process is called as decoding. So this is at a very high level, the concept of encoding and decoding is. So we have just seen in that sky table, so it has total of 128 characters. So a sky can be represented in seven bits. When you look at the resources online, you will come across a terminology called extended sky. Extended sky is nothing but extension of sky where 
the 8 bits are used to represent a characters and it can in total represent 256 characters. So it can represent all the characters from 0 to 127, which we have seen in the uh, table before. But the extended part is that it can represent additional 128 characters. So for example, in that sky table that we have just looked into, it does not have any decoding for a copyright character. And the reason is, the copyright character cannot be fit into those 128 characters because it's not as commonly used as other characters which we use while writing a English transcript. But in extended sky, because it has 256 characters, copyright is mapped in one of the standards and the number it's given as 169. I'll mention a website later in the slides which you can go and have a look at the other characters in the extended sky. So a bit of history about these standards. So what has happened is that over time, these different standards has come into play at different point in the time to cater different requirements because 256 is a very limited subset to include all the characters. So different use cases as the time evolved, some of the characters changed and some were removed from, and over time, what happened was that some of the characters were actually removed, like especially the non-printable one, which doesn't make sense in the modern computer world. So they were removed and replaced with new ones. And also, depending on the use cases, there were different standards that came into existence over time. So it's not just one particular standard that we have for SKY or extended SKY. There are multiple standards. And on this slide, I have just mentioned three of them. On the next slide, I'll mention a website where you can go and have a look at the other standards as well, just for your familiarity. So what I have here is three different standards of SKY conversion. Now, what I wanted to show you here is that in ISO 8859-1, the copyright character is mapped to or is said equivalent to 169 decimal number. However, in a different standard, in ISO 8859-2, the 169 represents Latin capital letter S. And in ISO 8859-3, 169 decimal number represent Latin capital letter I with a dot. So the main takeaway is, first of all, there are multiple standards. And secondly, they're not consistent. And to solve this inconsistency, there is actually a new modern standard, which we will discuss later, that came into existence. So before I move on to that, so this is the website you can go into and the screenshot that you see here in the drop down box. So these are the different various standards. So just have a look at them. You don't have to memorize any of them, but still just have a look to see what are the subtle differences between the various standards. So all these standards have a sky table and an extended a sky table as well. Now let's summarize what are the limitation of these old standards. You know how there are multiple standards and these are relatively older standards. So that's why I have mentioned old standards. The very first limitation is that there are multiple standards and they have a potential of conflicting with each other. So we have already seen an example of 169. It means one character if you take one standard but it means a different character if you use a different standard. There is no consistency that 169 will mean exact one character. So second drawback is that encoding standards that we have seen is very limited. They can only fit in 256 characters, which essentially means that we cannot cover whole world's language. We can't have a representation of Chinese characters, for example. We cannot have a representation of Japanese character because we have only 256 spaces. So the old standards are very limited. The third drawback is that even for single language like English, there is no one standard that covers all the letters that we need and all the punctuations that we need and all the technical symbols we need for a English language. And the reason is because it's only 256. And that was the main reason why different standard came into existence because different standards have different use cases. Now, these are the three limitations that we have with the existing standards. To overcome these limitations, we have a 
relatively newer and more globally acceptable standard and that standard is called Unicode. Unicode is no different than the other standards that we have seen. The main concept is still the same. What we are actually doing is we are mapping a given character to a decimal number. That is the base of this concept and that's exactly same as why ASCII and extended ASCII table existed. But we will see why this is more superior than than the others in the next slide. When Unicode actually came into existence, I think it was in 1980s or sometime, I might be wrong, but around that time, they deemed that 32 bits is a large enough to cover whole world's language. I think the way Unicode works as per the current version, it can support up to 1.1 million different characters. Now let's see what are the advantages of Unicode. Why is it more better than the ASCII and extended ASCII table? The very first reason is that it's universal. Because of the space that it uses, it can address much wider range of characters and which can actually include all the languages of the world if it wants to. That's one of the advantage. Second advantage is uniqueness. The bit sequence has only one interpretation of a character code, which means that if you see a decimal number 169 and if it means or it maps to a specific character it will always map to a specific character it's never going to change in future as well unlike the previous uh, standards where different iso standards had a different mapping so that's the second benefit and the third one is uniformity and this has to more to do with the efficiency or the performance of unicode now Let's discuss about the character sets. I mentioned that Unicode had reserved four bytes to store a given character. And also note that the Unicode standard when it was developed, it was based on ASCII and extended ASCII format, which means that most of the English letters, both capital and small letters, all the numbers from zero to nine and most commonly used punctuation marks or the special characters, they actually lie from 0 to 255 decimal code even in Unicode because Unicode is based on ASCII and extended ASCII conversion and this is for backward compatibility which means the decimal equivalent of the letter A is 65 even in Unicode. Now let's say I am writing a document and I'm storing it on the hard drive and the document is in English or some punctuation mark like a full stop, comma. Now that I know that my document only contains the characters which fall from zero to 255 decimal codes. So then each character in my document only needs one byte to store. It doesn't need four bytes to store. If I'm using four bytes, I'm using three extra bytes of space which is a waste. So to cater this use case when as a user I know my document is in English in, in that case I can tell that all the characters actually fit into one byte and the way to tell that is using the character set. So we will see when we create the documents in using the Java program we usually will give the character sets. So the three character sets that you need to be aware is UTF-8, 16 and 32 those numbers there represent how many bits will be used to convert a character in your document into binary format. So if I'm sure that my document has only English characters and numbers and few commonly used punctuation marks, I don't need 16 bit or 32 bit encoding. My document can be easily encoded using the 8 bit. And if I use 8 bits to convert a character, then I'm also saving space. So this is the concept of character sets. So that is pretty much it that I wanted to discuss. I hope that you have a slightly more clarity on encoding and decoding and especially about the character sets. And we will actually see these character sets in our future videos. And that was the main reason I wanted to have this brief theoretical video to refresh your knowledge. Until next time, thank you.